Oh, hey, what's up? Colin Lay here with Lay Roots. And I get a lot of questions about series LLCs. I was talking to a number of people about it this last week. They are a hot topic lately, mostly, I believe, because Wyoming enacted uh, series LLCs to their LLC statute. Some other states had done it before, like Texas, but nobody really cares about Texas. Just kidding. I got friends there, so I can say that. Um, so Wyoming's got this series LLC statute, right? So a series LLC is basically a box. So you got your main LLC that you set up, established in Wyoming. And then you get to set up these like child LLCs. Boom, 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 boom. Right, so now all of the sudden, you've got your main LLC, and then you've got a new one. You got one, you got a second LLC, you got a third LLC. And all of these all relate to this one LLC filing. So it's one annual report, one annual fee, instead of having, you know, three or four. That's pretty cool. That seems pretty delightful if you are creating a lot of LLCs. Maybe you're investing in real estate and you want to put every property in an LLC. This helps you save some money and some administration headaches. You got one thing to do here. Each property can be in a separate LLC. So what are the drawbacks of this? Um, one, these all share the same name as this main one. So, you know, if you're trying to stay on the down low and not have people figure out how much stuff you own, you know, they could link all of these together if it's associated to say a, a property in each one, boom, property cartoon. So, I mean, you could do like a trade name for each one if you want, but then again, you got some administration hassle there. The other issue, the bigger issue I see is that this is Wyoming. This is Wyoming law or it's Texas law or Nevada, wherever they have series LLCs. And if you are, say, a resident of Washington or California, and you find yourself in a courtroom in one of those places, then there's no guarantee that the court is going to follow Wyoming laws. There's no requirement that they have to. The judge has a choice of law analysis, basically, that they go through. Very straightforward name for that. Basically, you're going to be in court saying, let's follow the laws of this other state. And the people who are suing you are going to say, mm, no, let's follow the laws of this state where we are. There's no telling which way it goes. It goes both ways. If it goes your creditor's way, all of these are going to get smashed down into one LLC. So then you end up with what you didn't want to have and you have a whole bunch of properties inside of one LLC. Creditor is coming after all of the properties. It's a neat idea, but it has some limitations to it. Also, these are all Wyoming LLCs. And if you're doing business in other states, you may end up needing to register each LLC in the other state. So you have to register them there. So you end up with the, the annual report, the annual fee, you end up with things that you didn't want in the first place, right? You end up having all these things. So how could you fix that? Do this. It's got a new color. This is what I'm thinking, because there's people who are investing in a lot of properties. So, you know, I have clients that come and they're getting into real estate investing and they got one property and then two. And then, you know, I talked to them a few months later and suddenly they have 10 properties because they're, they're down in Oklahoma City buying up some, some cheap real estate and renting it out cheap compared to Seattle, right? So how about this? Woo! 
Ooh, can't really see that very well. But this is your series LLC, your main one there in Wyoming. And then you got your child or children LLCs. Child one, child two, child three, child four, child five. And instead of registering those LLCs in the other states outside of Wyoming, like Ohio, Oklahoma, instead of registering them there, instead of registering the LLC there, perhaps consider putting them into a asset protection trust. That's better than a land trust. Gosh, I should have pre-done all this artwork. This is a house. Those are houses, properties. So what happens here is a property goes into an asset protection trust. The beneficiary of that asset protection trust is this child LLC property and a trust pointed at the LLC child. You get the point, one, two, three, four, five. An asset protection trust has beneficiaries designated in it. And if you have an asset protection trust, you typically have somebody, an independent person, maybe it's me, who can modify this trust if you get in trouble. Say something terrible happens here. Property four, the beneficiary of this trust could be someone else. It could become a, another LLC altogether that's just kind of sitting out there on its own in a way that draws this property away from all of the other ones. Now, of course, on all these, well, all these guys, you'd, you'd want to have another management LLC, that sort of thing. We've got some agreements between these trusts, these LLCs that this, this LLC company is going to manage all these properties, handle the money, that sort of thing. Money then flows up here, then flows ideally to your, your, uh, your main asset protection trust, which then goes all the way up to you. All right, so this drawing's getting out of control now. This is a lot of stuff going on here. However, very low um, annual maintenance, annual maintenance fees, right? You got one LLC ringing in here. All these guys don't have annual requirements. All of these trusts don't have additional annual requirements. If you've already got an asset protection trust up here, you know, you're, you have your trust protector uh, that's working for you. This could significantly reduce the annual cost of this whole structure. Oh yeah, then you got your management LLC over here. You got that annual annual fee and requirement. Otherwise, for all of this stuff, you are sitting pretty good. And most importantly, you have a lot of options, at least if you have the asset protection trust in there, because if you get into some sort of trouble, your trust protector or trustee can step in and you know modify this trust, maneuver a little bit, legal maneuvers that are allowed. So that's what I do. That's just, I talked to a number of people uh, this past week who are getting into real estate investing. They're gonna be investing in Oklahoma where they can just buy up property after property. So if you have any questions about how to get moving on something like this, how to get this type of structure in place so that you are protected from any of these stupid lawsuits that might come up, you can give us a call or go to livemorecarefree.com, schedule an initial call, be happy to chat with you about your goals and how we might be able to work together. That's it. Thanks.